Welcome back to the Express. Today we're hanging out at SFU in Burnaby with some kids from the Science Alive program. Rassi, what grade are you in and what do you want to be when you grow up? I'm in grade two and I want to be a doctor when I grow up. Ooh, that's a good goal. How about you, Lauren? An artist. Nice. And what grade are you in? Three. Three. Very good. Do you guys think that science helps you with any kind of career path that you might want? Yes. Yeah, I think so too. You know, you can be anything that you want to be, and you're going to see that with this next story. A young talent from Richmond who's sharing her voice with the world. Yeah, you. Whether it's inside a packed nightclub or in the comfort of her living room, Christy Young just loves to sing. You remind me what it's like to smile and It's the most incredible feeling and I have not yet found anything, you know, that I could, um, in this world that makes me feel the same way that I do when I'm performing. The 23-year-old Richmond resident mixes jazz and soul influences to create catchy melodic songs that tell her story. The song is called Won't Let You Hurt Me Anymore because it's that point when, you know, a person decides it's up to me whether I'm going to be happy, so I'm not going to let you affect me anymore and I'm going to move on with my life, so. But pursuing a career in pop music isn't easy and Christy knows that. Aside from a handful of artists, few Asian Canadians have been able to find success in mainstream music. I don't know that there necessarily is an underlying problem or that there's underlying cause behind why there isn't a lot of visible minorities in mainstream media in North America, but um, I just know that I haven't seen any and I, I want to change that. And that means trying to win over audiences not just here in Canada, but around the world. Last year, Christy recorded the title song for a popular Indian TV show called Mangoes. The song, which is sung in Hindi, has garnered more than 300,000 hits on YouTube so far. Having a Chinese girl singing an, an Urdu and Hindi song, like, it's not um, every day that you see that. So um, I'm just really thankful that everyone's been so amazing over there and, like, opened their warm hearts to me. Comes when you just enjoy the it's what Christy hopes is the start to a career as a pop star. But even if the fame and fortune doesn't come, she still has the admiration of a few loyal and dedicated fans who simply love the music. Uh, she's always got a super upbeat energy, so it, it, it's, hard, it's hard not to smile if you're playing and then you kind of look over and she's kind of doing her thing. Just her tune and the way she uh, performs and uh, playing guitar, I think it really makes her uh, unique. And at the end of the day, being able to make music is the real prize. It's not about fame or popularity for me. It's about um, doing something that I love because, you know, life is short and you might as well do something that um, makes you happy and this makes me happy. I'm Tim Chung in Richmond for The Express. You can go to the website christyyoung.com to find out about her EP and her upcoming Canadian tour. Now we're back at SFU in Burnaby with the kids from the Science Alive program. Right, what have you got here? Um, a wolf skull. How do you know it's that? Its nose is pointed out. Ooh, okay, and Scott, who do you have? I have a cougar, and I can tell because it has a flat nose. Wow, you guys know a lot. Have you ever heard of the bridal blues? No. 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 Okay, well, I don't know if it's scientific fact, but I know it's not fiction for a lot of brides out there. Have a look. Hi, I'm Aubrey. And I'm Sarah. And we are the Wedding Bells. I just got engaged. And I did not. We're on an adventure to plan the big day. Women everywhere, every day, suffer from it. They may be beside you at the market or at the coffee shop. It's the Bridal Blues. We now pronounce you husband and wife. You get this one special day. And now what? It's that feeling of sadness and letdown after your wedding day when you realize you'll never be a bride again. The thing is, people are going to start to think you're cuckoo bananas. When Sarah's Bridal Blues got out of control, we headed to therapist Hannah McCormick to seek some help. 
We are gathered here today, not for your wedding. I kind of look at other brides, and when they're getting married, I'm kind of jealous, and I don't like them. Is this normal? Bridal blues is very normal. Apparently so. I did experience bridal blues. Absolutely, 100%. I actually cried at the end of my wedding. I was so upset that it was over. Bridal blues, bridal blues, bridal blues, bridal blues, bridal blues. I sit at home in my wedding dress. And her hubby, his job is to fluff my train out behind me. What is going on here? Because it's a, a chapter of your life that's closing. It's a little bit sad when it's done. And why do they feel so much sadness? It's not much the wedding. It was the creative energy and planning. And the fix. You have to take all that energy and that passion and put it into something new. So create some new goals. You could put it towards nesting, setting up a house. Or what Sarah did, hold a Bridal Blues focus group. I actually started planning other people's weddings. <laughs> Since then, I've actually decided to take up wedding planning. This seems crazy. That's right, Aubrey. And for my wedding, I had wedding amnesia. I was not drunk at my wedding. I remember my ceremony to a T, and then it's a blur. The emotional part of your brain takes over, so the executive functioning, which is all at the front of your brain, that helps you make memories that have detail, it kind of shuts down because you're flooded with all these neurotransmitters firing like dopamine and serotonin. Yep, thank goodness for videographers and photographers. One of the things I like to suggest to couples is to create a memory jar, and what you do is you take little pieces of paper and you write down certain events or things from your wedding that you loved, and you put them all in a jar and then when you're feeling sad or you want to think happy thoughts about your wedding you can pull out one or at Sarah's wedding I loved the Italian bartenders you don't have bridal blues Aubrey I also recommend creating like a shadow box of maybe your invitation and certain things from your wedding I'm still kind of mad at my wedding planner for screwing up on the day if the wedding has been your focus since you were a little girl and you were dreaming of all the ways that it would occur and happen in this perfect world, inevitably something's going to go wrong. If you try to make it perfect, it's not going to be and you're going to be disappointed. And how potent is this wedding planning stuff? I can't wait to plan my vow renewal. I would jump at the chance to redo my wedding. So what should I channel my energy into now? Finding Aubrey a husband and planning her wedding. Oh no. For Shaw TV, we're the wedding bells. You can watch for The Wedding Bell's new half-hour show Friday mornings, 10.30, right here on Shaw TV Channel 4. You're watching The Express, and we have more from the Science Alive program here at SFU. You might even find out what's causing such a stir over there. Plus, have these stories coming up. Tomatoes, bacon. The provocative plates that scored Jimmy Stewart a spot on Top Chef Canada. It's paradise. Seriously, it really is. Where to snap some unbelievable coastal views on Quality Assured Collision Road Trip. The Express. We are your local voice. Community programming on Shaw has been generously sponsored in part by... Hairstyling and color services for Shaw TV. Provided by The Lounge Hair Studio. Loungehairstudio.com This is where I live. I was young when I came to Canada but my roots have never left me. My family is passionate about sharing our Persian culture here. It amazes me how people come to Canada from a thousand different places and backgrounds, and we all call it home. We all love it for different reasons, but we all call it home. back to the Express at SFU in Burnaby, hanging with some of the students from the Science Alive program. And you're going to teach me something about the sea urchin? Yes, I am. Okay. Did you know that sea urchin spines are ball and socket joints just like our shoulders? That's so cool. I had no idea. Thanks. Yeah, you can learn a lot in this program. You know, another place that's great for learning about marine life is the Shaw Ocean Discovery Center on Vancouver Island. And while you're there, you can keep on going with a quality assured collision road trip to Dallas Road for some awe-inspiring views. The water's pretty cold there too, though. Travel along with us as we explore the many marvelous attractions and activities of beautiful British Columbia on the Quality Assured Collision Road Trip. Hey there, on today's road trip, we're going on a real road trip. Dallas Road in beautiful Victoria, British Columbia. When I moved to Victoria 20 years ago, first thing I did Went for a walk on a sunny day on Dallas Road. 
and I fell in love with Victoria, haven't left. Sometimes I take what we have here on Vancouver Island for granted, like Dallas Road. It's close, it's always there, what's the big deal, right? But people from across Canada and around the world only get to come here on holidays or business trips. Look at this, look at this. You got water, you got mountains, and you got the cool breakwater. You can walk, it probably takes you like 15 minutes just to walk to that end. You're walking along the water here. I mean, it's paradise. Seriously, it really is. If you saw this somewhere else in the world, you'd be going, wow, I want to get there someday. That's where I want to go. I want to travel across the world and see that. There's always a cool breeze blowing off the ocean, so it's perfect for flying kites, except when there's those kite-eating trees around. Ugh. Another thing I love about Dallas Road, excellent rock and stick throwing opportunities. You ready? I can do this all day. I can do this all day. Good job. Oh, don't spray me. Don't spray me. Don't spray me. You never know who you're going to meet on Dallas. <laughs> You know what I love about this too? It's free. You can have a fantastic day down here at Dallas Road. Won't cost you a dime. All right, just steps away from the beach. Oh no! Well, how am I supposed to get down to the beach now? Oh, I <laughs> just go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah, made it. <laughs> Another thing I like, it's got oceanfront rollerblade. It's a skater's heaven and fun too for whatever this guy's doing. For quality assured collision road trip, in Victoria, I'm Dan Kong. Entertaining and informative, the quality assured collision road trip, weekends on Shaw TV. Always something new and exciting. Dallas Road is one of my favorite spots in Victoria. It's great to watch all the kite boarders, the kite surfers, the paragliders, and it gets super windy out on the brake rotter, so you want to make sure that you're kind of weighted down, right? Anyway, another one of my favorite things is food. You know who agrees with me? Sea to Sky host Nicole Fitzgerald, and we're joining her to find out why Whistler's making national news once again. Thanks, Johanna. The Barefoot Bistro is famous for many things. Sabering champagne in their wine cellar, vodka shots in their minus 40 degrees Celsius vodka room. And now it's home to a Top Chef Canada all-star. Meet chef extraordinaire, Jimmy Stewart. I love liquid nitrogen. It's no different than a pot of boiling water or a deep fryer or, you know, a pan with roasted butter. I guess you could say that might be one of my trademarks. Risk-taking is what this Barefoot Bistro sous chef is all about. It's what made him sign up to compete on season two of Top Chef Canada. It's baby tomatoes, bacon, uh, poppy seeds I don't really need. Some call it risk, others like Melissa Craig coin it creativity. And the Barefoot Bistro executive chef couldn't be happier to see the young 25-year-old upstart cutting his knives on national television. We're super proud of him. He's getting his face out there. I'm sure there's going to be job offers coming afterwards and, and he's, he's about to travel so I think it's really good for him as well. This gold medal plates Canadian culinary champion who has earned accolades from around the globe is opening up the menu to Jimmy every Monday night at the Barefoot Bistro. He will orchestrate a three and five course tasting menu for guests while they tune into the Food Network to catch him in Top Chef action. For my style of food, it's you're ready for things you're not really expecting and different flavor combinations. But uh, the most important thing is it's, it's going to be all Canadian ingredients, all inspired by Whistler and Pemberton and just, you know, the Pacific Northwest in general. Casting for drama, all the reality TV stereotypes were there. The diva, the girl next door, the high roller. 
When Jimmy showed up at the first quick fire challenge, he tried to figure out which one he was supposed to be. It's interesting because we, we're not allowed to watch television or talk on the phone or you know listen to music. It's all super concentrated. You're just interacting with each other and thinking about the competition. So it, it definitely got a little stressful sometimes. But after working under the talents of last year's Top Chef Canada winner Dale McKay and Hell's Kitchen legend Gordon Ramsay, Jimmy was ready to rumble. You could feel a lot of, you know, competition working for Gordon. Everybody's trying to get up higher, faster, everybody's working hard, you know, slinging off to everybody and it wasn't too different from Top Chef. Jimmy could only tell three people he was filming the show this summer. His parents weren't one of them. So when sneak peeks of episode one came out, his parents were shocked. And not just because he was in the show. All the family seeing the tattoos come out and, you know, hearing me swear and all that good stuff. <laughs> It's just Jimmy being Jimmy, something this laid-back West Coast native is both off and on the camera. From Whistler, I'm Nicole Fitzgerald for Shaw TV. The website is barefootbistro.com and again, guests can watch Top Chef Canada every Monday night and enjoy a three or five course dinner or even just a glass of bubbly at the Champagne Bar. Sounds great for me, but not for these young scientists, although we do have some more family-friendly ideas with today's Express Spotlight. Social Bites Networking Services presents Indulgent Dance, the newest culinary adventure in Vancouver. On April 14th, lovers of the sweeter things in life will convene at the W2 Media Cafe and Performance Center to enjoy some fine treats by local artisans and dance off their guilty pleasures. Watch the world's fastest juvenile racers carve their piece of the future one gate at a time at the 20th anniversary Whistler Cup. Over 400 athletes from 21 countries compete in three different disciplines. Richmond Multicultural Community Services hosts its third annual Diversity Dialogue Conference at Kwantlen Polytech University in Richmond. This one-day conference engages youth and adults in diversity issues through art, performance, and discussion. You can also learn more about SFU's Science Alive program online at... ScienceAlive.ca. Yeah, thanks to Caitlin and Jillian and all the other kids from the program for co-hosting with us today. And... Thanks for watching The Express, only on Shaw. Yeah, she's going to have my job one day.